showing is live on my streaming software. It's Saturday, and... Oh, crap. <laughs> How the fuck has this happened to you? Oh, my bloody microphone cable's all wrapped up in the bloody nuts. Oh, God. Oh, gold. <laughs> The ones I've just turned off. Right. So they weren't being used anyway on this profile, so I thought I'll turn them off. Cut down my uh, number of active months. Today, as you can see, because I've got mods involved, it's single player today. Turn my microphone up a bit. Oh, it is. Right, and this is my truck for tonight's couple of hours. She's a Volvo FH 600. Custom paint job based on Guild Wars 2. Inside we have a illuminated uh, LED flag, a couple of dangly things. You'd have to be really skinny to get in that uh, that bunk. SCS, you need to lower the bunk. <laughs> now I weigh 60 kilos. I I make a telephone pole look fat, and I wouldn't get in there. <laughs> no. That'd be the laptops, uh, this all me dispatches. Oh, there's the boss. Right, and we are currently parked outside Tesco. Although, I'd like to know how they lifted the container off. There's no container cranes here. Oh, the joys of doing container work in Euro Truck Simulator 2. Most unrealistic container physics in the world ever. Right. Okay, job market. We'll probably end up staying around here. Uh, don't freeze something up. 
So let's have a look at what's in our Brisbane. Boxing turn again to Fish Guard. Uh, plastic to Dublin. Apples to Belfast. Limerick. Londonderry. Birmingham. Grimsby. Portsmouth. Cambridge. Oh, Almeria in Spain. Lublin in Poland. Oh, chicken meat going up to Scotland. I think I will take today. Um, yeah, let's go to Portsmouth. Some apples to Portsmouth, I think. Uh, 18 tons. 23 grand. Although, why is that? A, th a grand more than that. Maybe trade her a pain more. It goes across the country, goes across the M62. And or maybe I'll go to Cambridge. Car falls in Cambridge. It's a nice little run down the A7. Uh, the A47. So we'll take that. Right, um, we've got to go down to. We've got to go up. We've got to go up here to pick it up. Now, Aberystwyth is on the Mac Loop. As far as I'm aware, the low level training area for RAF, United States Air Force. Now, the Mac Loop. Has nothing to do with going supersonic. Because you're not allowed to do that overland. But certainly in the UK anyway, you're not allowed to go break the sound barrier unless it's a emergency. So the fighter planes, they go fast down there, but they don't go supersonic. So why is it called the Mac Loop? Quite simply because of one little place, Machinsleth. A little village on the coast of North Wales. And I think it's the start point of the loop. And I've never actually been there. Well, I do want to go there one day when we can with my camera and climb up to one of the uh, vantage points. And apparently, if you pick the right one, you can actually look down on the aircraft as they twist and turn and go down there. <laughs> I mean, you're standing on some kind of rocky outcrop, and there's this. Uh, fighter plane, an F-15 or a Typhoon or something along those lines going bloody fast two or three hundred feet below you although they don't like, generally as far as I'm aware they don't like the afterburners probably because it would cost too much I mean yeah fighter planes have actually uh, gone supersonic over the uh, United Kingdom. Usually when uh, something has happened, a civilian airline has gone radio silence and it needed to be intercepted quickly because there's a radio violation, there's an airspace violation. Or because of, uh, particularly up in Scotland near RAF Lucas, where a Duplof TU-95 bear or blinder or backfire 
Someone else from the uh, Red Air Force has decided to pay our airspace a visit. So we need to go bloody quick to meet up with them and just say, Oi, Vlad, kindly do one. <laughs> Because whilst we were building the HMS uh, Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales, not to mention our new astute class uh, submarines, the Russians were very much interested in what we were doing. So they quite often they send a reconnaissance aircraft over there, over our territory, to have a look. So we send up a pair of typhoons or a pair of tornadoes or whatever we had at the time to basically go say hello. But this kind of activity has been going on it's like uh, for quite a while now. You know, newspaper reports: Russian aircraft, uh, you know, Russian bombers uh, visit UK airspace. As if it's something new. The Russian Air Force and Russian Navy have been flying around our airspace, probing us, seeing what we're up to. Since the end of the Cold War. No, since the end of the World War II, sorry, the beginning of the Cold War. It's nothing unusual. And up to now, our, uh, you know, the Royal Air Force, and occasionally the Americans as well, because I think they also get. Uh, called upon from time to time to uh, say hello. Do we really need the intermission to tune on? I don't think we do now. I wish you cut that branch back. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, it's nothing really unusual. I mean, if, anything, if you go to Alaska in uh, the United States, and possibly the Aleutian Islands, you're going to get the same thing. Also, as well, if you go to Japan, you've got the northern Japan, Sakhalin Islands, uh, part of Russia now. Originally part of Japanese territory. I think uh, a sign at the Japan Russian War from early part of the 20th century. You know, the, the Russians have been playing around near the top of Japan, so it's nothing unusual after all. I think Xiong Su wrote the Art of War, mentioned that uh, perhaps it would be a good idea to know what your enemy is doing. Know thy enemy.
which is exactly why the Russians like to come up and occasionally say hello. Where's that? Where's that one going? Uh, down there. Right, Cambridge. That's what we went for. We can't retake these because they're refrigerated containers and I've got no APU. So there we are. We have to back down that gap down there. So the way to do this, although I'd like to know how they go put the container on the, on the trailer. Spin round. Do a spinny. Wind the window down so I can see out the window. Right. Just temporarily lost sight of where the trailer's going, but. Looks like it's going to the right place now. Nope. The blind side reverse is one of the hardest manoeuvres to do. Because you can't actually see where your trailer is half the time. I mean, the new Mercedes has got um, mirrors where the passenger side mirror tracks the trailer so you can actually see down inside your trailer a bit difficult with this truck Now, this paint scheme, uh, it's called Guild of Thieves. Guild referring to Guild Wars 2, Thieves because it's basically part of a pirate pack, of uh, accessory pack that was available on Guild Wars 2. And that's the character who's wearing it. I thought I'd name it Guild of Thieves. Kind of makes sense. And low time to now put the box on the back. It's got to be dark when we leave. Oh, no, it isn't. Right, who's the container? Oh, it's a uh, Mediterranean shipping container. It's a low cube one this time. It's not one of the high cube ones. It's, as you can see, it's a little bit uh, battered. It needs a bit of a clean. But these kind of containers, they spend most of their working life and on the uh, ocean. They only actually come ashore for either the first part of that trip or the last part of that trip. It's usually about a couple of hundred miles. And then you put on a container ship for the, for the rest of the journey. If only the, sh uh, the sheep were more um, responsive. Because you do that near sheep, they will just scatter. 
Oh, big loud scary thing. Run away. So, okay, we have got to go north when we go up to here, because we're going to, going to Port Maddock and Carnarvon. You know, trouble with hot, sunny, warm weather that we've got right now, headphones are really uncomfortable. Oh, there goes my paint job. Scratch. <laughs> That's probably the farmhouse too were uh, there. Now I wonder. I'll probably have to come back here at some point. I wonder if I'll actually get inside there. Because with the short, with the trailer compacted, this trailer is fully extendable. It's had, uh, you know, it's designed for 40 foot and 20 foot containers. So here we are. This is the run up the uh, up the Mac loop. Probably could do pretty quick round here, but nah, no real point. You know, remember, ETS 2 is not just to be treated like a video game. It's actually a hazard perception simulator. Not 
not a video game. Uh, there is a slight bit of difference here. Hello Josh, how you doing? Turn off my light. What light? It's dark. <laughs> Need me headlights on. So we gotta make our way to Cambridge now. And that light on the back there, of course, I've got LEDs on the uh, back of the uh, the aero kit. So we go up toward Dolhechlo and Lake Bala. I mean, if we go, if we had a road that went down there, that would eventually take us to Shropshire, Welshpool, which is on the uh, on the border. But we can't go that way. There's no road there, apparently. So we have to go this way. Up to Betsy Coyd, Port Maddock, uh, and a couple of other places. I think Port Maddock is the next town on the on the route. Because Barla down there on the uh, on the A5 and Betsy Coid, Betsy's Wood. Now, if you go down towards Port Maddock, is actually the uh, start of the Welsh Highland Railway, and also as well the. Lano Festiniok to Port Maddock uh, Slight Railway. Both of which are in the same same gauge. Built about the same time, but uh, what they've done now, they've linked them both up. They used to be two separate railways. And if you're on the Lano Festiniok Railway, you actually go past uh, Tulos Finid nuclear power station which is now decommissioned it's uh, they've removed the top of the buildings uh, down to just above the pile cap level uh, they've removed all the boilers out of the building and basically they've capped it off It originally housed two uh, Magnox type nuclear reactors. Although there's a hydroelectric plant uh, still there. 
operated by Magnox Limited, which is a uh, shell company or subsidiary of the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority, whose job it is is to decommission all of the Magnox nuclear power stations that were built in the uh, United Kingdom between the late 50s and late 60s, I think the earliest one, late, late one, about 1970, which I think was Wilva. You've got, you've got Sizewell, Bradwell, Chapel Cross, uh, Dungeness, Albury, Barclay, Bradwell. Uh, Albury and Wilver were the two of the last ones to get built. They have more in common with the advanced gas cooled reactor, which is a follow up for the Magnox design. And now we're moving on to uh, the European pressurised reactor, the EPR. These two, uh, well, these new reactors, one's going to be built at uh, Hinkley Point, Hinkley Point C. To which Hinkley Point A is another Maglox design. Hinkley Point B is an AGR. Hinkley Point C is uh, e an EPR. It's being built at the moment, but it's a bit late. Well, size well uh, C will also be a. I think that's got to be an EPR reactor. Size well B is a Westinghouse pressurized water reactor. The only one that's of its type in this country and Sizewell A is a decommissioned Magnox plant. Hello, welcome to my channel. As you watch me take a load of apples to Cambridge. Unfortunately, we won't be going very fast because this truck's only capable of 50 mile an hour. That's where her limiter is set. Carnarvon? There's a big castle in this town, but I don't think it's actually been uh, mapped out. It's on the coast. Uh, probably just over there somewhere. And it's where the Prince of Wales, His Royal Highness Prince Charles, had his investiture where he became the Prince of Wales. There's a big uh, slate circle in the uh, courtyard of the castle where he sat in all of his ceremonial robes and had a big crown stuffed on his head <laughs> by Her Majesty the Queen. But I'm not quite sure when Prince of Wales became the Prince of Wales. It was uh, probably a bit before my time. Early 70s, I think. So we now pick up the A55, pardon me, we can't go that way because that takes us to Hollyhead, that's going completely the wrong way, right road, wrong way.
16 miles to Conway. Now, it was about 2100 when I picked up this load. It's now 2.32, so next services I will need to have a 45 minute break. Well, actually, no, it's, it's my end of session, end of shift, so I actually need a uh, full nine hours. Or I could have 11 hours, or I could reduce it to nine hours. If I was actually travelling in accordance with full EU tachograph regulations. Although chances are, it's probably not really worth it in a uh, in a computer game. Well, I, might, I, do, I actually did that one day. Uh, did a run to Taco Laws. It's quite because of how the rest areas are spaced out. It's a little bit awkward to do it. So we won't actually be running to uh, Taco Graph Regs. Primarily because of the uh, the spacing of the uh, the rest areas, but we will try to run relatively realistically. You know, try not to uh, Now the Pen and Man, uh, Pen Manbach tunnels. If I recall, I think in reality there's only actually a southbound tunnel. The northbound uh, stretch of the road goes around the rock. Although I have to have a look at that in uh, Google Maps. Now we also will be going down towards Cambridge, so we won't actually be going anywhere near uh, Haitian. Which a few years ago I actually had a tour around that place, and it's it's interesting. Now I've always been, uh, you know. When it comes to power, you know, yeah, let's have nuclear power. Great idea. Low carbon generation, just what we need. And there's various people saying, oh, what about the nuclear waste? Oh, what about the fuel when they transport it? Well, the nuclear fuel... When it gets made at uh, Preston, I think it is, when you make the nuclear fuel, it gets delivered to site, gets truck is opened up and you take it out. Here's a strange thing. Before you actually put nuclear fuel in a nuclear reactor, without the need of uh, any gloves, Although they do wear glo uh, little mint gloves, like a lot white fabric gloves, when handling the nuclear fuel. That's not for protection of the uh, person who's up, who's handling the fuel. No, 
But that's actually to protect the nuclear fuel itself. So that uh, oil and grease off the human body does not contaminate the fuel. You can actually physically pick up and handle, roll it around in the palm of your hand. Uranium-235. Probably not recommended with plutonium, but reactors generally don't run plutonium. But uranium fuel, uranium and rich uranium-235, you can handle with it with your bare hands. It will not harm you. And it actually gets delivered to site in plain curtain trucks. No radiation seal shielding because it's not needed at this point. Only once it has been inside the nuclear reactor does it become dangerous because it gets irradiated. And that's the dangerous stuff, the irradiated nuclear fuel. Was people, uh, well, what if a train hits it? Good question. What happens if a train hits a nuclear flask? It gets quite messy for the train. They've actually got in the, the nuclear flask actually sat on display at Haysham. And this particular nuclear flask was used by the Central Electricity Generating Board back in the... Uh, early 80s, I think it was, or maybe in the late 70s, early 80s. To see what would happen if a train, travelling at 100 and something, 110 miles per hour, hit a nuclear flask. Yeah, it hit the nuclear flask. The train was completely obliterated. Quite a nice firing uh, in a big fireball. What happened to the flask? Nothing. <laughs> it just got bounced down the bloody uh, land of the test track like a football that's been kicked by David Beckham or Eric Cantona. It's bounced. Damage? A bent fin and a couple of scratches. That's it. <laughs> and w of the freight car that hit the nuclear flask? Uh, destroyed. Yeah, so, in that respect, nuclear fuel and nuclear uh, operating standards in this country are bloody good. Well, then you say, oh, what about Chernobyl? Surely Chernobyl shows that nuclear power is dangerous. Yes and no. Yes, it shows that if you do not follow operating guidelines, nuclear power can be dangerous. But... The design of the Chernobyl reactor was uh, such where it wasn't the best design. CEGB looked at the reactor design when we were talking about potentially updating the Magnox before we started building the AGRs, and we went, no, we're not having that design. It's too unstable at low power, dense, uh, low power outputs. So, it got canned. I'm asking daylight now. And yeah, you may also notice 6,700 kilometres. This is a brand new truck. It's barely worn in yet. Uh, 
This is th uh, supposed to be Thalwall Viaduct over the uh, Manchester Shipping Canal, which is down there. It looks actually nothing like the Manchester Shipping Canal. Well, at least in promos, it's actually modelled. So we'll be heading down there, and we're heading down towards the bottom of the uh, the M6, where we join the uh, A14, I think it is, well, yeah, I think it's the A14, at Catthorpe Junction. And then we'll be heading down, actually, down that road towards Cambridge. Now, when I was working as a van driver, I went to drop some supplies off to, I think it was at Mildenhall. We had a customer doing some work on the uh, US airbase there. And the uh, that particular road was very, very busy with container trucks. Hardly anything else, you know, very few curtain sizes, very few flatbeds. It was nearly all containers. Because you're all heading to and from. Uh, Hesham Container Port, not Hesham, sorry, Felix so uh, Container Port. I have a spec for my Volvo, she's a 6x2, she's a tag axle, which It's probably the better the uh, configurations. Better maneuverability than a uh, 6x2 midlift. And also as well, when you lift a rear axle, you get better traction. Let's move over lane, because lane 1 goes to Sheffield. Which we aren't actually going that way. We are So we are here. And goes across there. Now I don't actually think this road actually exists in real life. We've got the the A fifty about there. Which runs across down towards Derby, Burton on uh, Derby up here, Burton on Trent, and the M1. Or if you go what you can go to Stores, Stoke on Trent, and go north up towards Buxton. But there's no actual uh, direct route across there in reality, I don't think. And you got Catthorpe Junction, a little bit different than what it is in real life. And then obviously we've got London. Who'd want to go there? <laughs> so you'll sit at 50, uh, 50 mile an hour. Stay in lane two because lane one splits off again for the M5. This is junction eight on the M6 in reality. And it isn't actually laid out like this, it's laid out completely differently. It's actually two separate junctions. Like cross over the uh well cross underneath the M6. And then about here you got Junction 7. And then down here you got Junction 6, which is the Aston Expressway. And 
bridge, heads down, obviously past, naturally, Aston. And of course, Aston Villa football ground. And of course, you got Junction 5 a bit further down. Actually, actually that was probably a Junction 7, actually. You've got Junction 6 here. Then, obviously, you've got uh, Corley Services near Rug, uh, down by the bottom of the M6. Which we will probably need fuel on this uh, stretch of the run. Well, I think we can certainly get fuel down towards um, Cambridge. So we cross this stretch and now begin to merge over to Junction. Which will take us now down towards Junction 1 and Junction 0 of the M6, Junction 19 of the M1. Call his services. I think this is actually a moto service area. But it isn't actually laid out quite like that, it is laid out a lot differently. So we make our way down towards here, down here. Now, this motorway has been uh, completely redesigned at Catthorpe. The, over a couple of years ago, they redid the entire junction. Uh, to obviously ease traffic flow around the bottom so make it a little bit because you uh, to go down the way we're going we have to go down over I think you have to go over a roundabout then back up to join the A14 whereas the other way you can come uh, sail straight up and keep on going well we have actually reworked it slightly to make it a little bit more intuitive as you come up the A14 to go up the M6. If you're coming down the M1 to get access to the M6 or the A14. I don't know what that factory actually is. I think it's just a generic, uh, generic factory for just random scenery. Oh, we could run a Magnum. They were never really a popular truck here in the UK, and uh, they're never really popular in uh, Euro truck either. But two in a row, okay. But the spawn rate of older vehicles hasn't really changed much. Well, you'd think you'd have a reduced spawn rate of now of premiums, magnums, old FH, older Scanias. Because you don't see many Scania streamlines now. You don't see many Scania 2009s either. You still see the old Renault Premium knocking the bar, but we don't see many uh, Renault Magnums. Three random magnums, okay. <sighs> lane two. What's that lane one splits off? You don't see many uh, MP3 Mercedes now. You see a lot of the MP4, you see a lot of the MP4s with Miracams. Was it 
the MP5. Still the same basic cab as the MP4. Just slightly like valued with a little bit more tack. So here we are, just cruising down here. Now we've got 102 kilometres to go, about 60 miles. So a little over an hour and a half. Hello, welcome to my channel as you watch me drive some single player tonight. It's not my usual uh, thing. Because normally I'm doing multiplayer on the Saturday, but I thought Saturday I'll stay in single player. Let me let me Volvo stretch its legs on uh, on the stream for a bit. Got the M1, the A1 there, which goes all the way to, uh, up to Scotland from London. That's one of the longest roads in the UK, actually. The A1 is. Bouncing our way up here. This road really is bumpy and bouncy. Felix still there, going down towards the M11. Now I've never known a motorway junction to go down to one lane. This should be six lanes. Well, I think as this is part of the original uh, structure of the map, they've not updated it. However, now time to make our way down here. If you're watching and you want to chat, yeah, feel free to chat. I don't bite. I'll tell you what, though, it is bloody warm here. It suddenly got very humid within the last uh, hour or so. So I think we may be getting some. Uh, maybe a storm rumbling away somewhere. Here we are. Welcome to the outskirts of Cambridge. We are eight kilometres away from the centre of town. We will need fuel, I think, in Cambridge. We're down to just under half a tank.
Now I think we may go. I may see what uh, other trips are available. Looks like the bin days are due to be collected here. Ah, lovely timed. <laughs> well, I think that was more luck than judgment there. There's fuel just around, just outside the uh, car four there. So here we are. This is the the drop point. Just one uh, right hand side here, car four. See where it wants to put our load. Right, forty points there. Yeah, it wants us to go pretty much in front there, so we can do that quite easily, just back up here. Into neutral, into reverse. And just gently back. Boss is still sleeping. <laughs> Of, you know, gone through the uh, what's it? Uh, yeah. Literally, just uh, probably just a pixel. Right, and there we are. That's the first drop of the night delivered. Seven hundred and fifty kilometers, thirteen hours. So in reality, that would actually be a two-day trip. Of course, we can only actually drive for nine hours in a in a given day. Canterbury, Livorno, Istanbul. Uh, and now we can go to Hull, get this container reloaded, or we can go to Glasgow. And We'll take this load. <laughs> 
403,000 euros now. I think there's a lot of the SCS, the early SCS trucks. Let's go to here. Is what they've done, they've made the fenders a little bit too big. And they sit a little bit too high. So some some of them you go up and you up here. But SES haven't changed it, so we probably won't do for a while. Well as you can see this uh Of course, that's the skin. Now, I do need to rework the skin slightly and re-upload it because I didn't notice the bloody water spot that where I got the uh, name of this dream star image from. Well, hey, up, JT, how you doing? Right, uh, I'm just making my way to a uh, fueling point, get myself some fuel, and then I got a good upstairs, grab myself a cup of coffee. Turn my bedroom light on because it's getting quite dark here. And then I've got to drive to uh, drive to the horse. How are yourself been keeping? I hope you've been doing absolutely fantastic. We've got a six hour drive to Kingston upon Hull ahead of us. And we ain't got not enough fuel to get there. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why? Oh look, there's a big scary truck. Let's park in front of it. Uh, the horn mod is uh, it's a shocker and it's on Steam Workshop. Right, where is the that's one of these, but I don't know which one it is. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's this one. Yes. One forty six. Relatively cheap diesel fuel. I wish diesel was 146 right now. You know, to fill something like this up now, you're talking the over a grand? Ridiculous. Ooh, what do you want to get into? Oh, right. Oh, that's for the 145, isn't it? I've got to get that. Because obviously, I do play ATS as well. Well, I spent most of my time on Euro Truck. Oh yeah, because yeah, the pro mods have got uh, Canada as well. It looks like they're working on it pretty, uh, pretty sharpish as well, which is a good thing. So we're now leaving Cambridge. I'll make my way to a uh, motorway service area and I'll get some uh, something to drink.
and something to eat. But this uh, JT is the skin I made the other day. Although, as this is an SES truck with an SES trailer, I'm about to take the fender tops off. <laughs> because of... Uh, if... Yeah, they are doing a lot of work to it. I mean, I'd like to know exactly what uh, SES are going to do with the Balkans. Let's go get myself a cup of coffee. Yeah, thanks. Uh, a mate of mine did the um, character for me. Because he plays Guild Wars. He's got like a uh, pirate clothing pack for one of his characters. So I was alright, yeah. I want to do a skin, so knock us together a female character with the uh, pirate clothing pack. Tap, 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 tap. So let me design what the character looks like on his game. So I chose the hairstyle, I chose the uh, the face. And he put, the, uh, put her in the pirate gear. And we went from there. He put her in the posies, took the screenshots. I did the rest. It's actually on the Steam Workshop as well. It'll be a lot sooner than bloody Russia. <laughs> I'll give you that. And there's actually two versions of it on the Steam Workshop. You got that version. And the one with plain white decking on the back. Yep, that is a treasure map. Um, if I go to... Uh, truck manager. Let's take this one. Yeah, I've got a Skoda Superb mod, but we'll just do some free roaming. This is the SES Pirate Paint Pack. If I go to the... Yeah, that's two that's a difference. Well, if I go to the other uh deck plate. There's a different treasure map for the four wheeler. After all, if it's a pirate themed truck, you've got to have a treasure map. And you've got to have a wooden deck. There's also, as well, on the uh, back of the uh, wheel arches. Doesn't matter which one I choose. Uh, you've got the one with the chrome rubbing strips, but you've also, as well, got on the paint one. You've got a skull and crossbones <laughs> on both versions. Uh, if you've got the 6x2, I'll put the, again, I'll put the, uh... you got them on there as well. I haven't put them on all four wheels because I don't see the point of putting them on all four. I might update it with someone else there. I'm not sure yet. Maybe have the... Uh... But then you've got the, the other treasure map. Which is... Oops, wrong page up. Which is that one there. It's the one I've got at the moment. Now, if you've got Eugene's uh, Volvo, it do 
uh, upgrades. It does work on that, but when he did the deck plating, he put the uh, fuel cap slightly out of position. Well, it took, uh, didn't take that long to do. It took me longer to uh, get the all this bloody panel work to show because there was texture issues with it. Well, from what I can gather right now, there's no uh, missing textures, which is good. Right. Let's go get a coffee. Back in a bit.
Oh, JT. Uh, the power up paint job? No, it's just for the uh, the FH. Although you never know <laughs> what might appear, because I have done one called. Um, multiplied by ice and that's for the RGL scan you but as yet this one only goes on the standard scan you I've not worked out how to get the uh, the next gen to work properly so I won't be doing anything for the next gen for a while Right, let's go. Yeah, it works on the uh, Globetrotter XL only. Just done for the one cab. got the uh, the wooden deck version you don't you don't need them both on to uh, for one to work you can have either one one skin mod or the other skin mod to take you back uh, I did it that way because I tried to do them with both skins in one mod because not everyone would probably want uh, wooden decking My engines went quiet. Shouldn't be. I might. I think I may have turned the sliders down a bit to help with the gain of the microphone. Or. Still be volume down a bit on the headset. No, it's only for the decal.
Yeah, I turned it down on the uh, slider. Well, certain engines were a little bit too loud. So I just turned the uh, desktop slider down a bit. That's probably why it gone quiet. Right. Back to it now. Keep my eyes on the road. <laughs> well, the uh, the F H engine isn't exactly the loudest engine as well. I forgot a caterpillar engine in this thing. You? you wouldn't be able to hear me. So we're now going up the A1, I think it is. Kingston upon Hull. And it's starting to get dark outside, which means the temperature will probably start to fall outside, but it's a bit warm all day. They have issued um, reports for potential of a thunderstorm. We'll see, shall we? <laughs> we are uh, there. Not the A1, all the 180, that does over the on the bridge there. So we're not too far away from our drop point. As we uh, cruise around the UK, we'll hopefully get another container, but I don't know what we're going to get. That's the thing, unlike uh, multiplayer, can't actually dispatch me on jobs. Oh, cool. But I would like to be on the M20 at the moment. There's been, some people have been stuck on there for over 11 hours. Cruise controls kicking in and trying to hold me back on the retarder. We go downhill. I mean, we're also going to be getting. Uh, in this update, next update, we're going to get all adaptive cruise control. Great idea. <laughs> There'll be a lot more crashes in TMP because people will be using that in the emergency braking, but other people won't because they won't know how to work it. Someone cuts up somebody who's got that on, their truck automatically uh, goes into full emergency brake mode, and all of a sudden behind them, BANG! I'm recording you for brake checking me! Well, you know what TMP plays are like. Oh, for the fuck you. Pull doubles and you can't bloody handle them. These doubles always get hooked up on bloody things, don't I? But what they look cool. <laughs> oh, we had lovely rain on bloody Friday. I mean, Friday was lovely. I've 
seen it with my own eyes. I mean, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, and the, old, the other one is an 8x4. One of those with let's just let's just let's make a TMP truck, shall we? Let's go to disable all. Let's put that on. Okay, so I can only use official SES content now. Bump. 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 Bull bar. That one. Actually, no, that one. <laughs> Uh, not to mention the amount of bloody Michelin men everywhere. And uh, wheels. <laughs> yeah, I have actually seen abominations like this on on the T uh, on the TMP servers. <laughs> it gets worse. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh yeah, it's got to have a 750 horsepower. And you'll drive that with a one axle trailer. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, come on. And then cry because they can't get in anywhere with the damn thing. Oh yeah, and you'll have it like that going down the road all the time with all the beacons on. Why? <laughs> you don't need that. You, you do not need that amount of strobes. You do not need that amount of bloody axles. And then when somebody's got a tag axle and be struggling for grips and you lift the back wheel off the ground. You know, obviously put more weight onto the drives. Go to accelerate. The truck, uh, truck pulls a wheelie. Your truck's pulling a wheelie. You're hacking. No. <laughs> Simple physics. As long as you've got it by two uh, mid lift, or so six by two mid lift, you won't do a wheelie. You've got a six by four. Uh, those eight by fours, heavy haulage, pulling uh, low loaders and that kind of thing. Uh, typically, something like that. You would have uh, try the browser. You'd probably have it coupled up to something like that. You know, for hauling uh, oversized heavy weight equipment. Well, you can do that with what I've got. Generally speaking, if you're, whatever you're carrying, puts an excessive amount of weight to the kingpin, you'd want a heavy haulage. Alexa, stop. And TMP as well. You've got to have as much horsepower as possible, as many axles as possible, to look cool. No, you haven't. Exactly. The more axles you've got, the longer your chassis is, the harder it is to manoeuvre. I've used in TMP, I use a uh, either a 4x2 or a 6x2 rear lift. That's what you need. Yeah, that's ideal. Forty-four tonner. This is perfect. If you want uh, JT, I mean next week, uh, I could. I'll set myself up for possibly do a convoy serve without pro mods, just with a couple of Steam Workshop mods added.
maybe uh, consider coming along and tagging along for a drive. Because convoy mode is becoming more prevalent, it's certainly becoming more um, more relevant in the trucks uh, truck sim scene. The other thing is, it's also as well, uh, unintended consequences, people are trading payments. Bit of an unintended consequence there. Because people will uh, share pay mods so they can all convoy together. You're thinking, once you do that, it gets everywhere. The mod gets leaked. That's going to really upset a lot of modders. So I will never use a pay mod if I have a convoy session. Yeah, so there'll be no Z mod sounds. I mean, no Yeah, Wi-Fi is never the best. I mean, my computer is four meters away from my router. The only thing is, for me to get an internet signal, I need 25 meters of copper cable. So if you go to a, something like PC World or something like that, get yourself a really long uh, Ethernet cable. Use that. Run it along the walls or up through the floor or something like that to get to your computer rather than try to use Wi Fi. It's a much easier medium fuel signal to uh, pass down trying to go through the air. I'll probably, uh, for do that, I'll probably put uh, my Falcon skin on and my. and these skins on. And maybe multiply by eyes as well. I mean, the, uh, those skins are on the Steam Workshop. Once I, once I put them on Steam Workshop, yeah, you download them. You know, muck about with them, edit the DDSs. Yeah, fine, go ahead. I'm pretty much guarantee that they'll probably turn up at some point on uh, ETS 2LT or something like that. Somebody's leaked them. It's bound to happen. as well put uh, Arnux container mod on. I mean, I'm, I've got a couple of versions of Arnux container mod. This particular version I'm using now, I've edited all the, uh, some of the images and the def files, which is why you see a uh, Polar Survey container behind me, as opposed to a, uh, a MERSC or whatever container, because I did that for myself. Particularly because one of the uh, containers has uh, gas prop. Oh right, okay. So, we were Virgin Media for our internet. I mean, my mobile phone's through EE. And I've been with EE since they were Orange. And my first ever mobile phone was with Orange. My second mobile phone 
was with Orange. Then I went to uh, one to one. Then I went back to uh, Orange. And I've been with Orange ever since. One to one, this uh, basically is what became uh, EE. Oh, oh, um, it was like one to nobody. Yeah, phone to phone, great connection. BT, great connection. One to one? No. No. So, that's why I went back to Orange. And the number I've had now. Uh, I've had since. 2000, I think it was. I mean, I did have two mobile phones on um, Orange. One was on contract, one was on pay as you go. And the number I've got now used to be my pay as you go number. And my other, me contract number used to be ending, uh, you know, was no 7866 orange number. I've not used that number uh, for about eight years. I don't even know it's, uh, if the number is still active. Somebody else might have that number now. I know I'm not telling you what it is. Well, I might try and dial it at some point. <laughs> ah, you picked up my old mobile number. But mobile phones, I think my first ever mobile phone was an MR30 and old Motorola. And it was heavy. The battery on this thing was. Do you remember? Yeah, you probably remember. You know, music cassettes, like your, uh, your traditional music uh, music tape. The battery was as big as one of those, and it was a third of the size of the phone. There's a little pull-up an antenna. It had text messages like one line of text was just scrolled across. Well, it's multi-line, I think. I say a little pull-up antenna. Yes, yeah, I've still got all those behind me. I just That's how big the battery was. <laughs> then they had a Ericsson 1018. About, uh, then they had a Nokia 402. Then a Nokia 3210. Then a 3310. Then an 8210 and an 8310. Those, those are like the really little ones, the really diddy things. Well, I only actually, uh, was still using my 83, t uh, 8310 until about three year ago. It's sort of like, what's that? It's my phone, it's like, the old ringtone, you know, the old uh, Pizzo ringtone. Although that phone is dead now because I can't get screens and uh, covers for it. And it was in a, uh, one of my pockets and I bumped into a uh, an I-beam that was holding up a bloody barrier. But where I used to work and I punctured the screen. And that's what killed it.
Yeah. We well, be 3210. I was up on a uh, stack of tires and I dropped it. It fell. Best part of 15 feet. Doink, 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 doink. Not a scratch on the damn thing. Yeah, okay, the same car carrier fell out, the casings fell apart, the battery came out. Click, 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 click. Beep, beep, turn it back on. Works fine. <laughs> I mean, my 8310 as well, that survived a bloody uh, 40 degree wash cycle. Don't build them like they do not build them like they used to. Let's go to trade up. <laughs> okay, I need a new speaker on it because the speaker had corroded. But apart from that, it was fine. Because everybody, because uh, the speaker was corroded. Everybody sounds like I was talking to having the chipmunks. <laughs> like, can't what you can't tell me what you're saying. The speaker's fucked. <laughs> uh, then I had a. Uh, my first smartphone was a Sony Xperia. The battery died on that. Then I had a uh, Galaxy. I think it was. Now I've got another galaxy. Well, trouble with smartphones, their speakers, are, uh, uh, screens are so vulnerable. The Ericsson 1018s I had. One of them was great. The other one was unreliable. The one, the one I had with one to one was worked okay. The one I had with T, uh, orange was back of shite. I uh, don't knock the S7. Damn good fucking phone. You know, Samsung make good phones. I'll go and take some uh, kitty bits to to Carlisle. He might wake up when he smells of food. But then again, he's a he's a cat. He always bloody sleep. I suppose you're laughing at ETS too being a cat. Would be nice if uh, Cecil liked the animated it. Twitches his ears every now and again, or he switches his tail, or makes a meow from time to time. CGM. French shipping line.
Yeah, the only thing is, when I was doing this game, I kind of put uh, the graphics slightly in the wrong place because the panel line goes right through the eyeball. Really annoyance about that skin, this skin. as well. There's actually a uh, pirate flag waving behind it. That is meant to be there. It's not a bug. She's a little bit... Um, Say it would be the one to win because the uh, <laughs> image on the back was bloody tight. We got this one here. That is the starter sword that you get. Again, in a similar sort of uh, posing position. Because if this was SCS, she'd be completely mirrored on the other side. I mean, originally I did put the pirate flag up there, but it ghosted down onto the cabin above there. Didn't quite like it, so I, was, I took it off. Of course, you've got the uh, the pirate map, and also as well, the Dreams Time bloody uh, logo. Oh shit! So I'll probably rework that. Of course, if you go down to the uh, side here, behind it all, there's uh, a compass. Hi, up, game. How are you doing? Welcome to my channel. Let me just rehitch my trailer. Can't wheelie a truck without doing anything dodgy. Right, okay, let's go to Carlisle. Uh, unfortunately, no, because this is not convoy mode, and I've got uh, pay mods and private mods on this profile. So, unfortunately, uh, it's single player only. Sorry about that, but. I mean, the paint skin is uh, on Steam Workshop, but my engine mods that I've got on here are pay mods and private. So, sadly, not today. 
next week I do plan on potentially doing a maybe a convoy session so there'll be like one or two uh, Steam Workshop skins put up so maybe next week you might be able to join the week after which is Hiroshima Memorial Weekend where the Japanese um, have a memorial to do with their when the Americans dropped a nuclear bomb on them, August the 6th, 1945. The Truckfest season moves to Scotland, and my plan is to go that, go that show. Which means August the 6th there will not be a YouTube stream. Because August the 5th I'll be driving up there. August the 6th I'll be probably in my car at about 8 o'clock around somewhere around Carlisle. <laughs> I won't be, I'm not expected to get back into the UK. Uh, back into yeah, the Midlands. It's about 10 o'clock. <sighs> You'll have a break from me. So we're now going to go up towards Newcastle, um, towards Leaming Bar Services, where we come off the, the motorway. And then we'll be going across the Pennines through Hawes to Carlisle. This will be probably the last run of the day, I think. So I've got things I need to do. Now on to a road that takes us out towards the A1. Following another container truck. And then I think a couple of weeks after Truck Fest in Scotland, we got August the 20th, we've got Convoy at the park. Which I also plan to go th go to that one as well. Because convoy at the park is literally just uh, about an hour from where I live. Uh, shortly after that, there's Nutsford, which is about half an hour uh, half an hour forty five minutes away for me to get to. And then there's towards the end of the truck fest season as well, there's Newark. Which is about that's about an hour and a half away. I've never actually been to that show. So I do want to go to that one. Also as well at Newark uh, Showground. Nearby there's also a uh, the Air Museum. Which I've never been. It's also worth a, uh, uh, worth a visit.
This is the M1. And that's a Scottish registered truck. That's the A1, sorry. The A1M. Yeah, it's probably actually at the uh, Newark Showground, which I think is next to a, uh, the Air Museum. It's a nice, nice place for Newark, is. Now, is this Renault going to behave itself and let me pass, or is he going to be an awkward problem and put his foot down? Puts his foot down. What a twat. <laughs> this is Park Quiet Three. Ad Astra on Axis. Not a bad piece of music, actually. God, fun this! Well, I was listening to uh, watching a video by The Secret Vault, an urbexing uh, channel. Something I've never really done. This is where we approach the services, where we come off. We've got Leamington Bar Services just over the uh, over the way. Go down through here. And, uh, this particular road would actually be. You would want to go down here, hair Austin down here in the truck. It is actually much bit narrow. It's actually wider than game, it actually really is. Where's Jaguar there? Well, I've had a look at uh, halls on. Uh, Google Maps. And Pro Mods have really done a good job at it. They've certainly done a good job with um, leaving bar services. That is pretty accurate. I've actually been there. This is how I know is how, how accurate it is. Oh, 
Also, as well, new. I think there's a Volk bomber uh, on display. Although it's sat outside, so it's probably not in best condition. So RAF Cosford and a lot of their old outdoor exhibits have had to be moved indoors or uh, scrapped. Because it started to uh, corrode, fall apart. Which is never a good thing. We'll go flying down uh, quickly through here. Cobbles in the wet are really wet. What's he doing out there this time and that taking the photographs? He's probably as prolific as um, Hank Studeman of Hank's truck pictures, although our website now is no longer with us. Even worse when you've got a 48 foot uh, Australian quad axle trailer behind you. Or you're coming through with a uh, Nordic 25 meter outfit. Garsdale, I think we're now in Lancashire crossed over from Yorkshire into Lancashire. We've crossed that line. Now that would real if I tried to do that, it would not have given me that down change. As I went to go into uh, manual mode and kick it down a couple of gears. Well that failed. This is the M6 North. Just a run now down into Carlisle to finish off the run for the day. Uh, 
at some point then I'll probably drive in single player pure single player head up towards Inverness where this profile is based I suppose I could always do ATS next week I'll certainly be uh, I'll host a, I might host a convoy if any of you are interested in joining relatively vanilla so people can join. Hi up Fanta, how you doing? You're running a bit late buddy because my stream's about to end. Once I've made this delivery, that's it. It's done for the night. But welcome aboard. If you like what you see, pray to the gods of like, share and subscribe. We are 47 kilometers away from the end of the stream. stream for a couple of hours on uh, a Saturday because people have got things to do and this that and the others so. just let people know I'm still around bed in Carla. For those of you who are into your trucking industry and trucking memorabilia, Carlisle is actually the home of the uh, of Eddie Stobart, who has now been brought out by Colina after Eddie Stobart went. Well, let's just say they had a bit of a financial issue. 
did now. Seven hours, 11,000 euros, leveled up. That's it. Thank you for traveling along today for the short few jobs that we've done in the last uh, just under two and a half hours. So, all be well. I will see you next week. Yeah, it's been a nice one, uh, JT. No idiots on the road apart from the AI traffic. And the one behind the wheel. <laughs> so, yep. All been good. And with a bit of luck, I'll see you all next week about 8, about eight o'clock. It won't be with ProMods. It'll probably be most likely be a convoy session. Uh, if you've got ProMods, I can chuck ProMods on, but not everybody has ProMods. So, it'll be a base, base game session, I think, with just a couple of uh, skin mods thrown in so for now take care and be safe be well and see you next week thank you for following